Hi, I'm Colleen, formerly the executive director of the Hemp Industries Association and directed by the Departments of Agriculture in Tennessee and Arizona for helping institute regulation around industrial hemp. And I'm here today to introduce Courtney Moran of Earth Law and Agricultural Hemp Solutions, who has been working hard helping organize on the Industrial Hemp Act of 2023. And also Erica Stark, who's the executive director of the National Hemp Association. Tell us about who's been organizing this bill. You and Erica, I know, have been uh, very involved. Yeah, so the concept actually was initiated by IND Hemp out of Montana. They're, you know, some of the largest uh, grain and fiber manufacturers in the country. And they have been contracting with dozens of farmers and hearing from the farmers firsthand how they are struggling to get through the burdensome regulations that have been put in place on industrial producers. And when we, you know, I think Morgan said the best, when we took the word industrial out of industrial hemp, we lost a very important distinction in our regulations and in our production and in what our farmers have to do to actually grow this crop. And so it was out of that need that she, uh, you know, brought me to the table. I've been working with IND Hemp for several years now and, uh, you know, went to NHA and, and brought Erica to the table and said, hey, we need to figure something out to make this easier for our farmers to actually engage and grow grain and fiber. There's a, a different, you know, risk threshold for folks that are growing grain and fiber versus growing cannabinoids and our federal regulations need to reflect that. And so, you know, with Morgan bringing us all to the table, we we both went to our collective teams and, you know, we've been working really hard and we're so grateful for everyone that has stepped up and come to the table and been putting a lot of effort and energy in over the last 16 and a half months to get us to the place where we have federal legislation introduced on the U.S. Senate floor. Congratulations. I know it's been a big effort for sure. So, I mean, how is this really going to help the farmers? Well, to your point, it is first and foremost for the farmers and there's, there's several re things that are going to benefit them. You know, first and foremost, the, the exception from the felon ban and not having to go through um, kind of the embarrassment of, of getting their background check done and their fingerprints taken, like being treated kind of like they were criminals. In fact, after we made our announcement on social media that, that we got the bill introduced, one of the, the first shares of that was from one of, one of our farmers that said, this could not be more welcome. I just had to go get my fingerprints taken, um, you know, just two days ago so I can grow a fiber crop. Um, and he's, you know, expressed kind of the resentment of, of being, you know, perceived as, as a criminal by the government. Um, but over and above that, I think it's going to actually, it's going to benefit the processors like Morgan as well, who have been struggling to convince farmers that they do want to grow this crop. Um, and I think industry-wide, it's going to also have some benefits in the, in the bifurcation of industrial hemp from cannabinoid hemp because we've still seen banking issues, transportation issues, importation, all manner of, of um, confusion still around the legality of hemp as a broad category and institutions and agencies having hesitancy about embracing industrial hemp because they didn't know how to separate it from cannabinoid hemp, which is a little too similar to marijuana in their view. Um, so while I might disagree that that's right, it is the reality on the ground. So we're hoping that creating this sub-definition not only benefits the farmers, but has broader positive impacts on the industrial hemp side of the industry as a whole. Right. Yeah. And to really help our entire supply chain, right? We're hearing this not only from folks in Montana and I and I, at IND Hemp or the, or the farmers that Eric is talking about in Pennsylvania, but we are hearing it from our manufacturers across the country that, you know, they have taken the time and investment and built up their infrastructure, and yet they are struggling to get farmers engaged because of the regulations 
that are put in place and that, you know, the market isn't giving back the value of what these farmers are putting in when they're having to go through these additional regulatory hurdles. Right on. So tell us a little bit more about the legislation. Um, what's an overview? What are all the high points of, of the Industrial Hemp Act of 2023? Well, the bill is a bipartisan bill introduced in the U.S. Senate by uh, Senator Tester out of Montana and Senator Braun out of Indiana. And what it does is create a new sub-definition for industrial hemp and delineating out the harvested material as only grain, stock, or fiber, um, and anything produced from those parts of the plant, which had always had an exemption under the Controlled Substances Act. So we want to just bring that forth uh, within a very clear de definition for industrial hemp. And then it creates a new regulatory framework for any farmer that designates that they are specifically growing only industrial hemp versus hemp for any purpose, which could be cannabinoid hemp flower production or uh, dual tripurpose crops that have anything to do with cannabinoids. Within that new framework, the farmers are, as Erica mentioned, no longer required to undergo uh, background checks or, or be restricted from um, engaging if any they had any uh, previous criminal history. They will be required to still get a license, still have their same FSA report, but they will only be required to have a visual inspection. And if that visual inspection verifies that they are uh, producing the crop consistent with their designation, they are good to go. But if there's any question by the Department of Agriculture as to what is being cultivated, then there are enforcement measures in place for the departments. So a verification of intent through documentation uh, or a harvest inspection. And if there's any question beyond those two mechanisms, then there is the uh, right for the Departments of Agriculture to require a chemical test to verify what the THC concentration levels are in the parts of the plant or uh, the parts produced that are inconsistent with that designation. So any floral production. So also we have left up to all jurisdictions, the uh, discretion for levels of enforcement. And so whether if someone violates their program, it is a civil penalty, a fine or a criminal penalty, depending on what was done in the field, we leave that up to the local jurisdictions. But anyone that is found to uh, have violated the program intentionally will be kicked out of the program for five years. And it's that simple. I think one of the best things that's happened in this is being able to raise the money to have the action platform, um, because this is an issue that even if it's 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 very important to the farmers and the people of the industry, but for people who are looking for green products, supporting hemp legislation so that we can have more hemp foods, uh, more hemp fashions, uh, anything that has to do with hemp as a green sustainable product for the economy, this is their issue too. So um, hempexemption.com has been set up uh, for this initiative, and it has the action platform that will automate letters to Congress on behalf of the voting person, connecting them with their elected official to either encourage them to become a sponsor of this legislation, um, encourage them to vote in favor of this legislation, and if they identify that their elected official is already in support of this, it sends them a thank you letter and acknowledges that, you know, they're grateful for the support. So that's a really cool thing that you guys have been able to set up under hempexemption.com. Yeah, thank you. And really to the industry, you know, we spend all this time working because we believe in you and we believe in this crop and we believe in the American farmer. And we think it's really important that we create a level playing field and a, a federal platform that makes sense for farmers to participate and to bring this crop back into rotation. And with that, we can help bring our supply chain back to the U.S. And that's what the real long-term goal is with this. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's been a long road to get where we are today. This is a definitely a, a huge and very important milestone. Um, yeah. But in many ways, now the real work begins, right? Um, we have introduction in the Senate. 
We have to work on getting more co-sponsors for it. We have to work on education and dispelling some of the myths that have been swirling around. Um, and, and ultimately we need to get this inserted in the farm bill. So we are going to rapidly be approaching a all hands on deck kind of scenario where we want and need all of your support initial reaction to this bill being introduced has been overwhelmingly positive and we're super appreciative for all the support uh, we've received but uh, and we hope that we can count on you to keep supporting it moving forward. Definitely yes please take action hempexemption.com and I hope that all the, the sponsors advocates everybody sort of echo that the uh, action platform is out there so that you can earn as many support letters headed to Congress on behalf of this incredible piece of legislation. Thank you so much for taking the time to learn more about the Industrial Hemp Act of 2023. We are really excited about this opportunity to create new federal policy for our industrial hemp, grain and fiber farmers, and to create opportunities for development of our domestic supply chain. Yes, thank you everyone for watching. We're super excited to uh, keep going and get this legislation over the finish line. We hope we can count on your support. Um, and just a, a note of uh, a, a personal note that I would like to say that, that working with these ladies and including Morgan, who's not here with us right now has been a, a very empowering and wonderful experience. Um, so, uh, and. Colleen, it's great to see you here. You've been doing a lot of work behind the scenes that I don't know has gotten the recognition that it deserves. So I would just want to take a second to thank you as well. Um, and I look forward to working with all of you moving forward and uh, getting this across the finish line. Thank you, Courtney and Erica, for your time and answering these questions and support the Industrial Hemp Act of 2023.